There's a place in the world where honking is frowned upon, and the sight of traffic lights is as rare as finding a snow leopard in the wild. Welcome to Bhutan, a country where happiness is not just a feeling, but a national policy. Today, we're traveling into the heart of the Himalayas to explore Bhutan's unique approach to happiness and why its lack of traffic lights is more than just a quirky fact. Bhutan, a small kingdom between China and India, gives us a fascinating glimpse into an alternative lifestyle that prioritizes well-being and environmental preservation over modernization. We'll learn about how this country measures success not through economic indicators, but through gross national happiness GNH. It's a concept that is as intriguing as it sounds, but it's not just about the philosophy. Bhutan's realistic policies are an important part of its quest for serenity and simplicity. Stick around to the end and you'll find out how Bhutan's story challenges our conventional ideas of progress and development. The country prompts us to question our own lifestyles and consider what truly makes us happy. Plus, who wouldn't want to learn about a place where the government seriously considers the happiness of its people in every policy it makes? Bhutan does more than just talk about happiness. It has redefined it on a global scale with its pioneering Gross National Happiness Index. But how did this small Himalayan nation come to put happiness at the core of its national identity? The journey began in the early 1970s, when Bhutan's young king, Jigme Singhi Wangchuk, introduced the world to a radical new concept. He argued that the true measure of a nation's progress should be the happiness and well-being of its citizens rather than its economic output. This was a bold rejection of the traditional gross domestic product GDP metrics that domesticated global policies and economies. In Bhutan, this lofty ideal became a guiding principle for government and development. The GNH Index is a comprehensive measurement tool that evaluates the population's general well-being across nine domains. Psychological well-being, health, education, time use, cultural diversity and resilience, good governance, community, vitality, ecological diversity and resilience, and living standards. Officials carefully measure and evaluate each one to ensure that progress and development do not come at the expense of people's happiness and the country's rich cultural and natural heritage. But what does this mean in practice? In Bhutan, this focus on happiness translates into policies that prioritize sustainable development, environmental preservation, and cultural promotion. For instance, one of the laws is that at least 60% of the country must remain forested for future generations. This way, Bhutan can safeguard its breathtaking landscapes and its people's well-being. Bhutan's focus on cultural preservation ensures that even as the world becomes more connected, Bhutanese citizens are still rooted in their traditions and values, which are important components of their identity and happiness. The lack of traffic lights in Bhutan's capital, Timfu, and across the nation is an example of this. Instead of lights, they have traffic police at intersections. The country is committed to simplicity and environmental consciousness instead of automating the flow of life. Bhutan chooses to manage it through human connection and interaction, creating a sense of community and belonging among its citizens. It helps the country create less stressful and more personal interactions within the community, showing how the country prefers human connection over automation. One of the most visible symbols of this philosophy is the national dress, the go for men and the kira for women. This isn't simply a traditional dress code, it's a vibrant expression of Bhutanese identity and unity. Wearing these clothes every day helps create a deep sense of belonging and pride among the Bhutanese people. It reinforces social cohesion and ensures that their rich cultural heritage remains alive and cherished. But Bhutan's approach to happiness doesn't stop at clothing. The kingdom's national sport, archery, is more than just a competitive activity. Archery competitions are festive, communal events that bring together friends and family. It creates community bonding and provides an outlet for physical activity and entertainment. These events are filled with good-natured rivalry, laughter, and friendship. It shows just how Bhutanese culture prioritizes social connections and shared joy. Bhutan also celebrates Gross National Happiness Day, which shows the nation's commitment to happiness as a state philosophy. This day shows the nation's collective belief in the principles of GNH, encouraging citizens to contemplate and act upon the values that contribute to their well-being and that of their community. 
There are also other unique festivals, such as Teshu. These colorful spirited events are important moments for Bhutanese people to connect with their spiritual heritage, celebrate their cultural traditions, and strengthen community bonds. Through mask dance and religious rituals, Teshu festivals provide a space for spiritual reflection and communal joy. They show off the GNH principle that places equal importance on cultural and spiritual well-being. Bhutanese festivals celebrate religious figures and teachings that form the heart of Bhutanese culture. Sure, these are a time of joy and celebration, but they are also clear communal expressions of faith and devotion, reinforcing the spiritual connections that bind the community together. You can also see Bhutan's commitment to happiness and its environmental policies as the world's only carbon-negative country. Bhutan is the perfect example of environmental sustainability, absorbing more carbon than it emits. Its forests cover more than 70% of the country and are the planet's lungs. This remarkable achievement comes from its strong conservation efforts. It shows how Bhutan is dedicated to preserving the natural environment for future generations. In terms of agriculture, the kingdom has made a huge move towards organic farming. It's trying to become the world's first 100% organic nation. This protects the environment from harmful chemicals and improves biodiversity. It means that the Bhutanese people have access to healthy, nutritious food. However, to really understand Bhutan's journey towards happiness, we've got to go beyond the physical realm. This serene kingdom shows us how spirituality and thoughtful policies can sculpt a society where happiness flourishes. You can see the spiritual backbone of Bhutan in its monasteries and sacred sites. These architectural marvels are vibrant hubs of meditation, prayer, and community life. They offer peace, solace, and a path to inner peace for both locals and visitors. You can also see the importance of spirituality in Bhutanese prayer flags. These colorful banners carry prayers and mantras on the wind, spreading goodwill and compassion throughout the land. This practice shows their collective dream for happiness and well-being, making the spiritual a central part of Bhutanese society. The country's unique approach to government also plays an essential role in its happiness. The kingdom provides free healthcare and education to all its citizens. They recognize them as essential to individual and societal well-being. These policies ease some of the biggest challenges, allowing Bhutanese citizens to live without the burden of basic survival. The country also has a ban on public smoking. This shows just how devoted Bhutan is to public health and environmental cleanliness, which also helps people's collective well-being. In Bhutan, the media is carefully regulated, focusing on uplifting news and values. This approach seeks to create optimism and contentment among the population. It's a very different approach to the often sensationalist and negative slant seen in global media landscapes. Education in Bhutan also reflects this vision, with schools incorporating happiness classes that teach children about GNH principles, emotional well-being, and the importance of spiritual and community worth over material wealth. This educational approach plants the seeds of happiness and contentment in the youngest citizens, helping to continue Bhutan's unique approach to the world. Bhutan reinforces its focus on happiness with its cautious approach to tourism. Like other countries, all visitors to Bhutan must get a travel visa. But what makes their policy particularly unusual is that you can only get one through a tour company and you have to pay per night. Yep, that's right. The visa alone can cost $40 per person. Then, on top of that, you have the cost of the tour. During the peak times of the year, it's $250 a day per person. Outside of that, it's $200 a day. Sure, that does include accommodation, meals, and much more, but it's still a very different approach. Then, there's the kingdom's approach to technology. While the country embraces modern technology, it does so with mindfulness. These tools are made to improve human connection rather than replace it. The country has adopted technology selectively, from controlled internet access to the thoughtful use of tech and education. Tech is meant to preserve the country's cultural identity while preparing its citizens for the future. This approach to happiness and development has not gone unnoticed. Bhutan has become a place for those questioning the relentless search for money at the expense of human and environmental well-being. It challenges us to think about what truly matters in our lives and societies. Is it the constant chase for material wealth, 
or is it the quality of our relationships, the health of our communities, and the preservation of our natural world? Bhutan's unique approach to happiness goes beyond simple policy or philosophy. It is a lived experience, part of the culture and daily lives of its people. Bhutan teaches us that happiness is not a fleeting goal to be chased, but a sustainable state of being, coming from a harmonious balance with nature, community, and self. It reminds us of the importance of slowing down, appreciating the natural world, and creating community connections. Bhutan shows us that investing in the environment, embracing sustainable practices, and prioritizing mental and spiritual well-being can lead to a happier, more fulfilled society. In the end, Bhutan's message to the world is clear. Happiness is more than a destination, it's a way of living. By embracing the principles of gross national happiness, we too can work toward a more joyful, sustainable, and most importantly, happy existence.